Fulgrim laughed at a stunned look on Ferris's face as the forces of the Allies opened fire upon the Salamanders and the Raven Guard. Hundreds died in the fury of the first moments, hundreds more in the seconds following, as volley after volley of bolter fire and missiles scythed into their unsuspecting ranks. Explosions flashed to life in their midst, vaporizing warriors and tearing through tanks as the force of four legions ripped the beating heart from the first wave of loyalists. Ferris Manus watched in mute horror as he saw a storm of fire engulf Korax and a titanic explosion mushroom skyward from where Vulcan stood in astonished outrage at what was happening. Even as terrifying carnage was wreaked upon the loyalists below, the retreating forces of the War Master turned and brought their weapons to bear on the enemy warriors in their midst. Hundreds of World Eaters, Sons of Horus, and the Death Guard fell upon the veteran companies of the Iron Hands, and though the warriors of the Tenth continued to fight gallantly, they were hopelessly outnumbered and would soon be hacked to pieces. Ferris Manus turned to face Fulgrim, and the Primarch of the Emperor's children could see the despair etched into his brother's features his silver eyes dull and lifeless. To have so great a victory snatched away in an instant must be the most sublime sensation. Fulgrim almost wished to switch places with his brother just to taste that feeling for himself. Only dismal defeat and death await you, Ferris, said Fulgrim. Horus has commanded your death, but for the sake of our past friendship I shall plead your case to him, if you throw down your arms. You have to surrender, Ferris. There is no escape. Ferris Manus tore his eyes from the slaughter of the loyalist forces, his teeth bared with the volcanic fury of his homeworld. Maybe not, traitor, but only dishonor holds any terror for me, spat Ferris. The Emperor's loyal warriors will not surrender to you, not now, not ever. You will have to kill each and every one of us. So be it, said Fulgrim, launching himself at Ferris Manus, swinging the mighty warhammer. The Primarch's weapons, forged in brotherhood but wielded in vengeance, met in a blazing plume of energy, and the battlefield was illuminated for hundreds of meters by their ferocious energies. The two Primarchs traded blows with their monstrously powerful weapons, the strength to defeat armies and topple mountains unleashed, as they fought like gods forced to end the dispute in the realm of mortals. Ferris Manus wielded a flaming blade in fiery slashes, his every blow defeated by the ebony-hafted hammer he had borne in countless campaigns. Fulgrim swung the hammer in great looping arcs, its heavy head powerful enough to crush the armor of a titan to paste. Both warriors fought with the hatred only brothers could muster, their armor dented, torn and blackened by the fury of the conflict. To fight an opponent of such magnificence was a privilege, and Fulgrim savored every clash of hammer and sword, every fiery line cut across his flesh, and every grunt of pain torn from his brother's mouth, as Forgebreaker glanced his armor. They circled in the midst of cries of pain and roaring savage glee, the Morlocks of Ferris Manor slain but for a few last desperate heroes. Ferris cut the shoulder guard from Fulgrim's armor and spun inside his guard to deliver a lethal thrust at his groin. Fulgrim stepped to meet the blow, batting aside the tip of the fiery sword with the haft of Forgebreaker, and hammering the Warhammer's head towards Ferris's skull. The Primarch of the Iron Hands took the blow, dropping to one knee and lashing out with his blade as blood streamed from the terrible wound in his temple. The sword's fiery tip cut across Fulgrim's stomach opening his armor and tearing into flesh. The pain was indescribable, and Fulgrim fell back, dropping the hammer as his hands sought to stem the blood pouring out of his body. Both Primarchs faced each other on their knees through a haze of pain and blood, and Fulgrim once again felt an ache of sadness well inside him. The pain of the wounds, and the sight of his brother's broken skull coated in blood, tore a window into his mind. The sensation was like a powerful gust of fresh mountain air, clearing away the fog that wrapped him in a suffocating embrace for so long that he no longer noticed it until it was gone. My brother, he whispered. My friend. 
You have long lost the right to call me friend, snarled Ferus, pushing himself to his feet and staggering towards Fulgrim with Fireblade raised to smite him. Fulgrim cried out, and his hand leapt unbidden to his waist as the flaming blade carved a burning path towards his neck. Silver steel flashed as he drew the sword he had taken from the Lair Temple and blocked the descending weapon. Ferris's sword hissed and spat as it bit into the silver blade, the primarch of the Iron Hand's strength forcing the blazing metal centimeter by centimeter towards Fulgrim's face. No! cried Fulgrim. This is not right! The Stone of Amethyst at the hilt of Fulgrim's sword pulsed with an evil light, bathing Ferris's face in a leering purple glare. Energy streamed from the blade, and musky smoke billowed around them, deadening sound and obscuring sight. Fulgrim felt a monstrous presence swell around him, its power and nameless essence more intoxicating and dreadful than anything he could have ever imagined. Diabolical strength flooded into his limbs, and he pushed against the power of Ferris Manus, feeling his brother's surprise at the resistance. With a cry of animalistic rage, he surged to his feet, and hurled Ferris Manus back, spinning and lashing out with his weapon. The silver edge bit deep into the breastplate of his brother's armor, and the Primarch of the Iron Hands cried out, falling to his knees once again as the blade's flaring energy parted his armor like a fingernail through cold grease. Hot blood sprayed from the wound, and Fireblade slid from Ferris's hand as he gasped in fierce agony. Finish him! Kill him! The voice screamed, and to Fulgrim it seemed as though it echoed across space and time, as well as within his skull. He staggered with the blunt force of its imperative, lurching as though the limbs were not his to control. His normal grace was forsaken, as he falteringly raised the silver sword in preparation for delivering the death blow to Ferris Manus. Unknown energies coruscated along the notched blade and down the length of his arms, into the meat and bone of his wounded body. Fulgrim was wreathed in purple fire. Crackling arcs of lightning caressed him with a lover's tenderness, seeking out open wounds and licking them with bale fire as they sought entry into his flesh. Fulgrim stood above Ferris Manus, his chest heaving convulsively, as his entire body shook with the violence of the power that wanted to claim him. He must die, otherwise he will kill you. Fulgrim looked down at his defeated opponent and saw his own reflection in the mirrors of Ferris's eyes. In an instant that stretched on for eternity, he saw what he had become and what monstrous betrayal he had allowed himself to be party to. He knew in that eternal moment that he made a terrible mistake in drawing the weapon from the Lair Temple, and he fought to release the damnable blade that brought him so low. His grip was locked onto the weapon, and even as he recognized how far he had fallen, he knew that he had come too far to stop, the realization coupled with the knowledge that all that he had striven for had been a lie. As though moving in slow motion, Fulgrim saw Ferris Manus reaching for the fallen sword, fingers closing around his wire-wound grip, the flames leaping once more to the blade at the creator's touch. Kill him before he kills you! Do it now! Fulgrim's blade seemed to move with a life of its own, but it had no need of such impellence, for he swung the blade of his own volition. The silver weapon clove the air as it swept towards Ferris Manus, and Fulgrim felt the ancient triumph of the presence that he knew had been with him all this time. He tried desperately to pull the blow, but the muscles were no longer his to control. Unnatural warp-forged steel met the iron flesh of a Primarch, its aberrant edge cutting through Ferris's skin, muscle and bone with a shrieking howl which echoed in realms beyond those knowable to mortals. Blood and monumental energy bound within the meat and gristle of one of the Emperor's sons erupted from the wound, and Fulgrim fell back as the searing powers blinded him, dropping the silver sword at his side. He heard a shrieking wail as a choir of banshees whipped around him as phantom skeletal hands clawed at him, and a thousand voices tore at his mind. Ghostly whirlwinds seized him and spun him around, twisting him like a limp rag in their grip, 
and threatening to tear him limb from limb in retribution. Even as he welcomed this oblivion, he felt another presence move to protect him. The same presence that had guided a sword arm. The same presence which had been his constant companion since Laren, although he had not known it. Fulgrim fell to the ground as the winds released him, and faded with a shrieking howl of anguished frustration. He landed heavily and rolled onto his side, heaving great gulps of cold air into his lungs as the sound of battle returned. He heard cries of pain, gunfire, explosions, and the rhythmic crack of boulders as they fired relentlessly volley after volley. It was the sound of death. It was the sound of a massacre. His entire body aching with pain and loss, Fulgrim pushed himself upright. Blood and the detritus of battle surrounded him, the stoic figures of armored warriors staring in wonder at a headless body which lay on the black ground before him. Fulgrim took a shuddering breath and raised his hands to the heavens, screaming his loss at the sight of his brother so cruelly murdered. What have I done? he howled. Throne save me, what have I done? What needed to be done? Fulgrim heard a voice as a sibilant whisper in his ear, the breath of the speaker hot on his neck. He twisted his neck, but there was nothing to be seen, no unseen speaker or mysterious presence. He is dead, whispered Fulgrim, the aching loss and guilt of his crime too monstrous to believe. I killed him. Yes, you did. With your own hands you struck down your brother, he who had only thought well of you and fought valiantly with you through all these long years. He... he was my brother. He was, and all he ever did was honor you. The looming presence that surrounded him and spoke to him seemed to claw at his eyes with insubstantial fingers, and Fulgrim felt his mind wrenched into the realm of memory, seeing once again the battle against the Diasporex and the Fist of Iron coming to the rescue of the Firebird. He saw the resentment he had picked at for months, only now understanding the altruism of Ferris Manus's deed, and the loss of life his selfless act had incurred. Where before he had seen only self-aggrandizement at his brother's action, he now saw it for the heroic deed it had actually been. His brother's critical comments, the wounding thoughts meant to undermine him, he saw that they had been jests designed to puncture his self-importance and restore his humility. What he had perceived as Ferris's prideful boasts and rash actions had been deeds of courage that he had spitefully dismissed. Ferris's rejection of his attempt to betray him was the act of a true friend, but only now did they see how his brother had, even then, tried to save him. No, 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 wept Fulgrim, as the true horror of what he had done struck him with the force of a thunderbolt. He looked around through tear-filled eyes and saw the horrific changes wrought upon his beloved legion, the perversions masquerading as Epicurean pleasures. Everything I've done is ashes, he whispered and swept up the golden fireblade, so recently wielded by his brother in an attempt to undo the evil Fulgrim had embraced. Fulgrim reversed the blade and held its fiery tip against his body the edge blackening his hands and burning the skin through the rents torn in his armor. To end things now would be the easiest thing in the world, to take away the guilt and wash the pain away in a sharp thrust of steel into his vitals. Fulgrim gripped the sword tightly, drawing blood from his palms where the blade's edge sliced his skin. No, noble suicide is not for the likes of you, Fulgrim. Then what is? howled Fulgrim, hurling away the sword his brother had forged. Oblivion, the sweet emptiness of eternal peace. I can grant you what you crave, an end to guilt and pain. Fulgrim rose to his feet and stood tall beneath the storm-wracked clouds of Istvan V, his once beautiful face streaked with tears 
and his pristine armor stained with the blood of his beloved brother. Oblivion, he said, his voice hoarse. Yes, I crave the boon of nothingness. Then leave yourself open to me, and I will put an end to it all. Fulgrim took a last look around. The grim-faced warriors, who had foolishly thrown in their lot with the war master, Marius, Julius, and thousands more, were damned, and they could not see it. All around him, he could hear the sounds of the future, of warfare and death. The thought that he shared the guilt of the destruction of the Emperor's dream was the greatest shame and sorrow he had ever known. An end to all of it would be a blessed relief. Oblivion, he whispered as he closed his eyes. Do it. End me. The barriers in Fulgrim's mind dropped, and he felt the elation of a creature older than time itself as it poured into the void of his soul. No sooner had its touch claimed its flesh for its own than he knew he had made the worst mistake of his life. Fulgrim screamed as he fought to keep it out, but it was already too late. His consciousness was crushed into the dark, unseen corners of his own mind, forever to be a mute witness to the havoc wrought by his body's new master. One moment, Fulgrim was a Primarch, one of the Emperor's children. The next, he was a thing of chaos.